All right, we are here. We are live streaming. Okay. So, looks like. <laughs> Looks like everyone's here. Okay. Carly Sichon's video. It's okay. It's recording. Great. Okay. All right. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. We have an exciting day or the actually an exciting hour and a half, we decided to tack on an additional half hour to uh, really take a deep, deep dive into film marketing and publicity. Um, so uh, again, thank you for joining us. I am Tavari Crouch. I am the independent film coordinator here at the Chicago Film Office. Um, we're really, really excited to be partnering up with Danielle Garnier, Miss Garnier of um, uh, uh, who is a national film publicist and has been doing this for quite a while. She's got a ton of knowledge and experience to share to, uh, today. So this is a very, very rare occasion. Um, I know personally as a filmmaker, uh, marketing and PR is not something that's, that's widely taught or discussed. Um, and it's such a huge part of what we do as filmmakers, right? Especially as independent filmmakers. So having that inside knowledge today is, is I, I, I know for a fact, it's going to be so incredibly powerful and invaluable to what you do as, as a filmmaker. So a little bit about the Chicago Film Office. Um, the Chicago Film Office is a division of the Department of Cultural Affairs and Special Events, uh, which leads the city's efforts to attract and enhance the production of future films, television series, commercials, documentaries, and all forms of local screen entertainment. So for independent filmmakers, it's a one-stop shop. We are the one-stop liaison for all City of Chicago production needs, including film permits, uh, city services, logistical support, and professional development opportunities like today's event. Um, so moving right along, uh, we have my colleague here at the bottom, if you can see, John Hunreiser. John, can you say hello and, um, and what you do at the film Hi, office? Hi, everyone. My name is John Hunreiser, and I work with Tavri at the Chicago Film Office. I'm a policy analyst and a project coordinator. Look forward to going through this workshop with you guys today. I'll be moderating the questions. Thanks, John. Um, and we're gonna let Ms. Danielle Garnier take over the rest of this hour and a half. Sit tight. Please um, come ready with questions. Don't hesitate to start typing in your questions in the, the Facebook comments section. Um, we are here to answer any and all questions related to film, marketing, and publicity. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we would love to know where you are Zooming in from or Facebooking in from. So if you could please put in the chat uh, your location. If you're in the city, put like what neighborhood. And if you're out of the city, the state, country, whatever. And if you're a writer, producer, filmmaker, director, so that um, we can um, talk about you and your career. Um, so I am happy to be here today and um, want to really share my experience of 26 years in the film industry, being a national publicist for distributors, filmmakers, animators, um, just about everybody. <laughs> so I'm going to show you a little bit about my background here. And um, what this, this workshop is really meant to do, we're going to talk about um, changing your mindset and creating a vision for yourself to sustain yourself in the industry, using PR and marketing as the foundation for your package, for your product, so that you have something that you can give to investors and sell and show people that you know what you're doing. Um, and it's also to help grow the Chicago film industry so that we um, can establish ourselves more strongly in the market, independent of Hollywood, although we do need them to uh, actually sell stuff. There are ways that we can use Hollywood's um, systems within our own 
um, to be self-sufficient and reliant and grow. Um, so that's part of that. what's happening here. And um, so let's see. So I, a little bit about me. I was born and raised in Chicago, actually South Suburbs. I went to Columbia College, uh, studied music business, ended up being uh, in, in film. I also studied at DePaul University in the uh, Integrated Marketing Communications Department. My career started after Columbia College when, uh, when I was I moved to the city and I wanted to be in the music business and I wanted to have something really substantial to happen. And there was, I couldn't find work in the music business. And then I went to a Japanese uh, life philosophy class on uh, um, karma and Buddhism and stuff. And then I started to practice and suddenly I met an anime distributor called Manga Entertainment and I got my career launched that way. Um, so I was one of the people that started uh, with Ghost in the Shell and all the popular anime that you probably have seen or heard of, um, which this was awesome, an awesome opportunity for me where I learned um, how to do theatrical releases, marketing all over the country, publicity um, for anime, for uh, music videos, um, because we were owned by the guy who discovered U2 and Bob Marley, and so he had uh, lots of concert videos. And um, we had, um, you know, basically uh, 400 released films. Um, so every month there's like three or four titles that we had to promote. Some of these uh, are my work. Uh, Ghost in the Shell, some animation. I'm just going to give you a little quick overview. Um, Sesame Street, Amazon Studios. This is Chico and Rita from Cuba. Um, some French animation. Sony Pictures Animation was a client, Funimation and Dragon Ball Z. So uh, some of the mainstream stuff I did are here with HBO, uh, the original Glorious Bastards, Nelson Mandela's documentary by Jonathan Demme. Uh, Sandra Bernhardt was really cool. I worked with her in Milwaukee. Um, George Carlin, the last uh, couple of theatrical films I did with the Charlie Brown and Sailor Moon musical, live musical, and Janis Joplin's um, Broadway show in theaters. Uh, some of the independent film I worked on are here um, from all over the country, different genres, different uh, messages, horror, comedy, drama, love, uh, let's see, some horror, yeah. And then in Chicago, these are some of the titles I worked on and the companies I worked for. This, uh, this one up here on top called Innocent is, Suzanne, um, is Alexa Vega and she was in Spy Kids. And uh, that was shot in one take um, down um, Lakeshore Drive in Navy Pier and that was a lot of fun. So we, um, let's see, well, there's a lot here. So this one here, this, uh, this is a Hispanic one that was made in the Aurora for the, sorry about that everybody, about the, um, the, uh, the people in the neighborhood. And so they hired all actors and local actors from there. Um, and it was a really nice, they, they're really trying to help the community. Um, some of the film festivals I worked with here. Landline is a Jim O'Hare movie. He was a comedian, well, he's still a comedian, but that was shot here in Chicago. And um, I'm trying to think what else. Well, this one here is from a DePaul student, Olympia. And so now I'm going to talk about the future a little bit. So I was attending a digital entertainment group webinar, and they were talking about COVID-19 and how it's changing um, what, what is uh, happening with the viewers. And they're saying that TV is changing because they've identified how consumers feel and why they're making their viewing choices. After COVID-19 hit, uh, most people started watching content, and what they chose mostly was drama comedy and sci-fi fantasy. Um, this was uh, uh, a media play news um, organization that basically did all of this data information. Um, and that they found that most people wanted to escape reality and then laugh. And then they wanted to watch what comforts them. And um, then what, what informs them. So in that order was they want to escape reality, laugh, what comforts them and then what informs them. And they found out that consumers were thirsty for more content, which makes production more important. Um, so here, this is a little slide of how much they're investing in content. Uh, everybody is 
more interested in more entertainment. Um, so they, um, they also said that when a public opinion changes about the world that our viewing behavior changes and that they will always change and linger so that um, the viewing content needs to make fast changes as society changes. So um, understanding what the consumers are feeling, um, that's the content you wanna create. That's the message they were telling us. And these are all the streaming channels that are growing. People are pulling stuff off of Netflix. If you haven't noticed, um, everyone's making their own content and putting it on their own uh, program. So this is an interesting way to look at what's possible when you might be making some content that is different, there's gonna be a place for your stuff. So opportunities filmmakers have right now. Um, with the Me Too movement and social inequality, the underrepresentation in Hollywood and Black Lives Matter means there's more stories to tell. Um, I, I really think that uh, with humanity, you know, everybody's really equal and we all matter. And so everyone's message is important to get across. And, and in Hollywood, um, a lot, I don't know if anyone's worked with some of the agents out there and the managers, but they really present, prevent people from coming inside because they're more, um, um, like if you, don't, if you don't have the money, if you don't know them, if you haven't worked with them, anyone they know, they will, will not accept your script. If you wanna to try to send a script, they'll send it right back and they'll say, I don't wanna get sued. So there's like this system in there where you'll notice that in Hollywood, like all the stories are repeated and it's like, oh, they already did this movie years ago. Why aren't there new stories? Well, there's new, new stories because no one can get in <laughs> unless you have the connections. So I think here in Chicago, I mean, it's, it's a little different, but it's interesting to realize that um, that's kind of what's preventing us a little bit. Um, but it does create more uh, opportunities for actors and actresses that are B and C level because they actually um, have more opportunities to work. They don't, they don't necessarily have to, um, they, they can choose a lower paying job if they wanted to, and they're actually seeking more opportunities. Um, people in the industry that are in LA and New York um, also want to shoot outside of LA and um, avoid a lot of the red, red tape and limitations. So as we know, streaming content is growing and that different audiences have um, different, they, they want to be reached. More people can make movies. Chicago can grow right where we are and we can learn from Hollywood, but we can become self-sufficient in Chicago. I really believe that. And um, we don't need to live in Hollywood or New York to make it. I think it's important that we identify and you identify your own vision for your own success. And uh, we can eventually make a living at it. There are people here in the city that have money that would invest if they feel that you know what you're doing and they can make money back. Um, John, does anybody have any questions yet? Um, no questions yet. Although somebody um, a few minutes back when you mentioned something about drama, comedy, sci-fi, fantasy, they wanted <laughs> to know in that order specifically. Yeah, that's what they said. So COVID hit, everyone wanted to like escape. So they oh, wanted yeah. to laugh, they wanted drama, comedy, sci-fi. Um, um, yeah, and then they, then they wanted to know, they wanted to feel comforted because everyone was like, what's going on in the world? We're freaking out, I wanna, I wanna feel safe. That makes sense. And I just wanted to give a shout out real quick, you guys. We got people from all over the place, a lot of local Chicago folks, but we have some folks from Bloomington Normal or Blono as they call it. Uh, we have some people all the way out in Europe, Glasgow, Scotland, UK, um, some folks in Peoria, some folks in Los Angeles, Oakland and California. We have some folks in Massachusetts and Boston. Wow. Um, a lot of writers, produ producers and directors um, awesome. on this uh, call with us today. Some folks from DC as well, from Nairobi, Kenya. Woo. Fort Washington, Maryland. So pretty diverse group we have today, which is Definitely. awesome. Thank you for sharing that. It's good to know who's there. So yeah, everybody, you know, I'm gonna give a lot of information. So take your, you know, at, after every slide, you're free to ask a question. I don't wanna sit here and make it boring, and just give you a lecture. So let's communicate and engage. I'm totally on with that, okay? So, 
All right, so here's the thing. Now I've worked with the Chicago Film Office, uh, International Film Office three times and two other film festivals a lot from Japan and Asia, um, a lot from people all over the world that do um, social justice um, movies, documentaries, they're from all various levels. And most people, is, let's see, at the Chicago International Film Festival, there's 70 films in two months that we had to promote, like two publicists each. So we had press kits that came in um, from, you know, all different places that were just hard for us to promote the movie because we didn't have the, the materials that is required for us to help you. So here we go. So um, one of the things is that filmmakers kind of go, all right, well, I'll just make my movie and then just see what hits, you know, just throw it out there and see what sticks. And most people are, because you're not really taught in film school or in college maybe, you know, you just think, oh, well, I'll just put it out in the film festival and see what happens. And then, you know, I don't really know how or whatever, but um, I'll stop it there and then maybe somebody will like it or maybe somebody will buy it. And I think that's very limited to what's possible for your life. Um, and the real one of the, you know, obviously the, I'm here because um, people don't think about publicity marketing and putting that into the mix. There's also a lack and limitation mindset that um, therefore, you know, you don't have the budget. Um, so people don't really budget for publicity or marketing when they're doing production. They just think, you know, well, maybe I can just, you know, I mean, obviously not everybody has money, but if you don't have money, still have a publicist or marketing person on your team on set because that's when it has to happen. Um, and, you know, it, it could also be because many people think, oh, Hollywood's going to save me or, you know, my distributor is just going to take care of the PR and marketing. I'll just make the movie and then they'll do the rest. It's, that's not how it works. In reality, distributors probably want to help you, but they, only, they have a limited budget too. And they don't always market because they, they might give you a deal where it's like, well, uh, you know, I'll just give you uh, this film out and you can promote it yourself or I'll cut you a different deal or whatever. So you have to really think that your film is yours and that you, you can actually manage the rest of it. Like go beyond just thinking about the festival and realize that when you want to be distributed, you want to have control of some sense of that communication and how it's going to roll out. So yeah, so that's what I mean is like, you know, there's no long-term thinking about your career in, in like in its lifetime, your film, once you're done licensing it, you can license it somewhere else. And then who's gonna market it then? Who's gonna publicize it then? Are they gonna have your press materials that you created or they're just gonna take whatever you gave them and then, and then see if it's, your, you know, if it's gonna go anywhere. So um, yeah, you gotta keep thinking further out. And um, yeah, you have to start thinking about marketing. Um, or I mean, you, you tend to after the film is made. So I already said that. Um, so the press kits and the marketing materials are incorrect. I've noticed um, like photos are really dark or um, they're just not really useful or they're, um, you know, you don't want to have a Starbucks coffee and the, and this, of the still, you know. Um. So um, yeah, we'll get into that in a minute. All right, so now we're going to talk about marketing. Is there any questions, John? Not yet. Okay. All right, so now what Hollywood does is they hire a unit publicist, they're union and they're very expensive, but if you're obviously not in the budget for it, um, you still need one. So you wanna position your movie in the early stages. Um, so you wanna think of like, so why am I making my movie? Are, are you doing it just because you love it, because it's fun, because you want to tell a story, you want to change the world? Um, is it just really, is it, I mean, do you just want to be popular? I mean, you really should start thinking about this when you're like before you start production. Uh, is there anything specific that you want to say? Is there a point of view that you want to get across as a filmmaker that, you know, you figure out what's your mission, what's your purpose in life? You know, what kind of films are you going to make and how are you going to change how are you, you know, what is, do you want to change the world? You know, maybe not. Um, so why yeah, should can I interject for just one second? We Absolutely. did have one question that was backlogged a moment. Okay. Um, 
the question is when you submit your scripts through a third party studio as part of a contest, can the idea be stolen even if it is copywritten? No. No, always copyright. If you're copywritten, you're fine. Copy that. But if if they if all of a sudden later on you see that someone has an idea just like yours, then you go after them. <laughs> I would. Copy that. Thank you, Danielle. You got it. <clears throat> okay. Um, yeah, so why should your film be made and what, yeah, so you want to think about what is going to make your film stand out from others. You don't want to be like every other film, you know, but you have to figure out these kind of things. Um, think of ideas for the right visual image that you want to use when you're marketing your film. Like, you know, you're, you're all creative people, you've got, you've got ideas, you've got visual, what, you know, your image really wants to um, capture the message um, of your stills, oops, I'm sorry about that, during the production. Okay, I guess I'm going here. Um, all right, so when you're starting to market your film, think about your target. So who is your potential audience and what do they want? Um, you know, if you need to really know, like if you're doing a horror film, like who are the horror people? Who likes horror movies? Um, what are they looking for? Are they looking for a different type of genre? What are, you know, I mean, you know, if you studied film, you know what kind of people you're trying to reach, but you should really um, plan that. And some of the selling points, you know, why is this the right film for your audience? And why are you making it now? Is the cast, uh, is, it, is it the cast? Is it a universal theme? The director's track record? Is it based on a true story or a well-known fiction? Um, move this. When is the right time to release it? For positioning your film, you wanna link your target market directly to your film, which means breaking down the audience because you use this analysis to determine how you will position the film. Reaching them is your real objective. Film referencing, I see a lot of people do where you say, oh, my film's like this one, which is good, um, but you, you wanna separate, you don't wanna be exactly like that. So. Um, select ones that um, okay. So, select ones that attracted a significant audience targeted to the same primary and secondary groups that you have named for your own film. For each reference, give a title, a year, release, and estimated gross. Uh, I can explain more about that later. I suppose if anyone wants to know, hooks. Um, what are the selling points of your film? Determine the factors that would truly hook an intended audience. Will there be any interesting backstories to pitch to the media for publicity purposes? You always want to think about when you're making your film, why should anyone care and why is it like cool and what would make, you know, I mean, in Hollywood, you know that if you see something that you really enjoy, there's something that hooked you. So think about what might in your film might hook other people that you're trying to reach. And then marketing strategy, you need to think it through, but, um, not make a detailed strategy yet. So some options are thinking about, you know, what is the size and scope of your release? Festivals, do you wanna put it out in theaters, stream it only? There's also event cinema as an option. And I have a resource there for anyone who's interested. Um, will your budget, will you have advertising and budget for advertising? Most uh, independent filmmakers, we don't have that kind of money for advertising. It's just way, way too much, but um, you wanna advertise for uh, on social media. So um, create special promotional screenings. So that's a possibility as well. Um, and do you wanna make it a grassroots movement? So, I mean, kind of giving you a lot here, but um, does anybody have any questions on all of that? Danielle, I, I have a question. Yeah. Um, so we're in the process of planning, whether that's pre-pro or, we're in the process of the filmmaking process. Should they start this and start thinking about all of these early marketing basics? Because my assumption is all of this is all of this target market, selling points, positioning, film referencing, hooks, and marketing strategy. They're all equally important and it all should be addressed. But where in the process should they start this? Okay, well, so. Well, before you start filming or like once you, I mean, if you're a screenwriter and you write your script, you know, you're thinking of a writer, but then you have producers and that producers often like work a little bit like 
uh, towards the marketing. You know, producers are the ones that hire the PR and marketing people. So I, I would assume that, I mean, the writer knows who they're trying to reach, but I think the key is really like when you're, you know, when you're starting to make your film or when you're thinking about your film, like, I don't know, maybe some of the filmmakers here or even you um, could say like, you know, your thought process behind how do you start making a movie? You know, I mean, everyone has a different approach. I mean, it's usually thinking about this beforehand, um, you know, but at what level, I guess it depends on each person. Right. And, but they should all have this sort of a lease written down or there's a place where this is sort of all of it, all of it's addressed so they're ready to go if they're, if they're asked, you know, what is your hook? What films are you referencing? How are you positioning? So these things are sort of, sort of at least started on while they're thinking about their film, why they're making their film is what you're saying is. Yeah, I mean, you're not, like if you're gonna pitch something to an investor, you know, you don't need to say, well, the hook is, you wanna pitch them so they're hooked. You know, so I mean, you need you, it's just to help you think bigger about attracting who you want to attract and just positioning it. Because if you're if you're pitching um, somebody, you, you want to know at least the three top three or four here listed. Um, you can think more about the strategy later and the hooks later. But um, yeah, I think it's key to at least know the basics in the beginning. Janet, question. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about your film's message. I love this tiger, it's really powerful. I love that picture. Anyway, so your film um, must have an intrinsic drama that appeals to your audience. It must demand participation from your audience. It needs to force an emotional response. It should stimulate curiosity and your film has to stand out. So um, crafting your film's message is usually done in the, it, it, you know, if you were to watch Netflix and you see the little synopsis there and it, you know, you're like, oh, okay. So that kind of explains, this is like how to explain in the press kit part, how to write certain things. So a log line um, is, what defines your film in one concise sentence that is about 25 words and it summarizes the film. So that's what I mean, like what you would see on Netflix. You identify the genre in the, base, in the process while at the same time conveying the basic storyline to the reader and the potential viewer. So you need to consider your film structure, the genre, the emotional pleas, the characters, the action and setting when you're writing a log line. One example for Alien that was written before it was made um, is terror begins when the crew of a deep space starship investigates a, a distress call from an alien vessel and encounters a deadly and aggressive predator. It's kind of long, but that's an example of what one, a log line would look like. And log lines are used in all of your marketing communications. So that will always be on your press kit. And that's kind of the thing you want everybody to know. Just stick with that. Taglines are more like a little newspaper headline or a pithy caption that you see on DVDs and packagings and billboards or posters and on the bus stop. These are designed to advertise the film and get someone interested in going to see it. And an example from Alien for that is in space, no one can hear you scream. Taglines are used later, but they should still be written during production. Any questions on that one? Um, not on this particular slide, but a couple questions backlogged. Um, okay. One of them was, how can filmmakers... Your audio just went out. How can uh, filmmakers in Nairobi, Kenya, get their marketing to the entire world? Wow. <laughs> uh, well, that would be your connections in America, I would think, or whoever you want to distribute it to. Um, that's a big, that's a heavy question. Um, to get it to the rest of the world? Um, 
So, yeah, I mean, it, it, I would think that if you have some context, it depends where you want to go with it. If you want to go, I mean, you could go the festival route in America and then tr come here and try to do a tour with it and then find context for your goal, like a distributor or somebody that your ideal person would be to release it. If you have a, um, if there's a company that you love that has movies that you always watch, you might, that might be your goal. You might want to talk to them as far as like trying to be, make them your distributor and try to reach them. So usually you start local and then you go regional and then national and then international when you make those connections. And then Danielle, just to build on that one real quick, we had another, um, question from someone that seems to be having um, some challenges beyond the film festival circuit on what to do with PR and marketing. She said she has a proof of concept. Her film's been in a dozen festivals, but everything's kind of stopped dead in the water now. She's trying to get it, you know, to the right person on a streaming site like alter.com, but it's like, you know, shooting, throwing, you know, darts in the dark. Hmm. Um, has it been six? Well, I don't know how to answer that without talking to her directly. <laughs> or, um, Beyond the festival circuit, I mean, what else can she do to get the most exposure for her film? Well, there's a lot of different things. You could do a lot of other, it depends if she's done, or is it, is a she a female? Yes. Okay. Um, social, social media, pushing it out to the, finding your audience is one thing. Um, you could try to attract, um, if you're looking for streaming, it depends where you want to go. I mean, you got to figure out, um, what you want to do next. Are you, you, um, you want to attract the, the streaming people, I would imagine at this point. So there, I mean, hmm. I wonder if we can get back to that question. Copy that. Yeah, because that's kind of detail. I mean, that's a that's that that that's kind of like the thing with filmmakers is everyone has all these different experiences and things. And I, I don't want to I want to answer the question, but I want to finish if that's okay. Ten four. Okay, thank you. So okay, marketing summed up. So your audiences do not turn up by magic. In most cases, they make a conscious decision to go to the cinema. And if you know specifically who your film will appeal to, it will help in targeting and marketing your campaign to your potential audience. Marketing a film is different from marketing other products because there are no brand loyalties among cinema audiences, except for in art house audiences. However, if you are Quentin Tarantino, then you have built your brand. So what I mean by that is, um, I think that a, I know a lot of filmmakers uh, that consistently put out product or building a brand like Quentin, you know, everyone knows, oh, well, you know, they know his movies. So that way, if you're a filmmaker and you want to, to continually grow, you can build your brand um, by people recognizing you with the publicity marketing that you've done because you've made yourself known. Creating marketing materials to go with your press kit will complete all of your visual ideas and messaging into one place. This is needed for both publicity and marketing for the life of your film. I think it's explanatory. Um, so you wanna give an impressive package to the festival's distributors and any potential sales agents. And that, that is what a press kit and, a, and, and what we're gonna talk about next. Make sure your messaging is consistent, clear, and it can be used internationally. So when you're, when you're communicating your story of your film, you wanna keep the, keep it the same. That's what I mean by consistently because internationally, for example, from Kenya, you don't want people in other countries to change your story because um, they may if they don't really have what they know is your message as a director or film, you know, producer. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the publicity. Um, most people obviously know what advertising is, but in, as far as like the difference between the two, just to summarize that um, the pros of publicity um, are that you become credible. It's an implied third party endorsement, which means that the press think, um, you know, your film is great. Other people are reading it. They're gonna be more impressed. Um, it will um, build your image because if it's news, it's considered important. It'll build trust and the cost for publicity is lower. But the only cons are that I really see are that you can't really control your message uh, because they may um, not, they may change it. 
the media will change it if they want to. Um, you might not get any coverage and the media may have other stories to consider. So you may not be able to reach them at all. That's kind of a drag. Um, but for advertising, the pros are that you can have complete control of your message. You can be creative and you can convey emotional messages, but it is very expensive, uh, potentially long development and lead time. So if you want to buy an ad in a magazine, you got to do it like five months from now or like ahead of time. Um, and people do not trust ads as much because they know the message is manipulating you versus the media where it's somebody telling your story. Um, and, and there you go. So, in, I mean, as far as advertising in film, really, uh, unless you have big budget Hollywood, you, you can just advertise on social media. It's the best bet. So this is why you need publicity. You want investors and you want impact. Ways that you can generate money and contributions in a direct impact way are building awareness and interest and demand of your film, your company and your cause. You will attract and retain audiences and fans and it shows investors that you know what you're doing. An indirect impact way that publicity works for you is that it will improve and manage your film's position. You can influence social responsibility and the public and culture in general by telling your story and having it told by others. You also want to grow and have a career. So publicity about yourself and your movie strengthens your position in the marketplace. Your, your, again, your career will grow and when the media recognizes you and then they might wanna keep reporting on you. Other people in the industry will find out about you and wanna collab collaborate on bit bigger projects. And you could start your own production company if you don't already have one and build your own brand. Those are important reasons. Okay, this I made a mistake, guys. Sorry, I gotta skip this. Okay, so what makes a good news story? Now, when you're thinking about your movie, a lot of I find a lot of filmmakers tend to think, well, I made a movie, I'm so important, and you know, this is so important, but you're not really telling the press why it's important to them. They don't really care unless you have a story, you know, and these are some of the ways that matter because otherwise they're just gonna ignore you. Um, hate to say it. You, you want to have, uh, okay, so what makes a good story is the impact. Does your story matter to the viewers or readers? So, um, you know, the bigger the consequences, the bigger the story. Uh, how, like, how immediate is it? Did it just happen? Is it going to happen? Um, timeliness is crucial. If you're late, you're not going to get a story. Proximity, um, people always cover local stuff. So you can always hit your local media for any story because that's, it, it directly impacts the people around them. Prominence means, does the story have like a celebrity or a well-known person? Um, if there's a recognizable name, the more curious your readers and audience will be. It doesn't have to be a celebrity, but anyone that is prominently known will make people's ears pick up and go, hmm, maybe I will write about this person. The novelty is uh, something new, odd or surprising going on something unexpected and intriguing in your film um, that always generates uh, interest. It's like, you know, the difference would be like, did a, a dog, a dog bit a man? No, it's not really interesting, but a man bit a dog, you know, that might be a little weird, you know, something like that. Um, conflict. Is there a clash of power? That's, you know, we know that's always <laughs> in the news. Dramatic confrontations are always interesting. And um, emotions. Does the story make us feel sad, happy, or angry? Because we all respond well to funny and inspiring human interest stories. So that's always good for documentaries because people are human and we wanna connect with other humans. And when you pull on emotions in a way that's not like jargon or tacky um, and you put it, position it that way, uh, the media will probably pick up on it. And okay, so I'll go on to something else. Anybody else talk, asking questions? Um, we do have a question about crowdsourcing, and once you have tapped out that resource, what other ways can you raise funds through marketing? Well, uh, hmm. I don't really do fund, uh, fundraising stuff. I would think that 
I mean, that's my point of this is presentation is really that publicity marketing would help you position yourself to investors versus like asking friends and family for money. Um, Tavari, do you have any ideas on that one? Um, if you're tapped out on your crowd, well, that's where it, it's challenging, right? Because with crowdsourcing, um, usually you're going to friends and family first. So that is sort of a separate conversation. But also, have you had any experience, Danielle, where your work in PR has helped a filmmaker who is crowdfunding? I usually don't. I don't usually work with the crowdfunding. No offense to anyone. I just, it's just, um, just not where I, my, my focus has been. Okay, well, here's another question sort of related to that because I know social media plays a big part in promoting um, crowdfunding campaigns. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know you spoke a little bit about um, really as independent filmmakers, it's, it's sort of social media that we can tap into because it doesn't require a ton of money in terms of advertising. Um, what else should we be thinking about when we're utilizing social media? Um, well, you want to start, you want to start having, you know, obviously your social media pages during production and promote, you can even advertise to the demographic nationally or internationally, wherever you're trying to attract to grow your viewers, to know about your awareness of your film. Um, and then once you start having people following you and liking you, then you can let them know you're looking for money or, uh, you know, if anyone wants to invest in this cause, um, that's a, that's like a whole grassroots, um, approach to producing, you know, um, so that's, that's one way, but you're saying this is sort of more of the, the strategy that you're laying out is speaking directly to, to, to investors, investors who sort of make it, this is sort of part of their portfolio, part of what they do is investing in films. Um, so the next question is, do they exist, especially locally here in Chicago? Um, well, I, I know that um, I've worked on a film where I found an investor in Chicago, but you know, it's really who you know, who knows people with money. Um, and also, you know, um, people want to be part of the film industry. And I think that if they were approached, you know, any banker or some, somebody, you know, runs the financial department, you know, if they were approached and met somebody who, you know, they could be, they could have an extra, they can have a credit on their film as an executive producer because they gave money to your film. And then they could be invited to LA or they could be invited to the premiere, invite their friends and family. You know, I mean, there's attractive things for people to, but you have to find them yourself. I mean, I don't really think there's a way to market it like a film versus like, this is a business deal. It's more like, I mean, um, yeah. I mean, I work with distributors and people who are already pretty much hooked up, um, you know, as far as theatrically or home video. So um, I don't know if I'm answering that question, but. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's, 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 I think it's, all of this is good to know because it's, again, it's clarifying what the filmmaker's goal, goals are and every filmmaker has, has different goals because we're all individual. Um, and also I think any tool in the toolbox that sort of amplifies the message of the film can only help. So, um, and going back to what you said, there's really no one way to go about this in terms of raising funds, in terms of drawing attention to your film, but these are, at least these are the base, basics that we should be thinking about, right? Yeah, I, I mean, start, start, start a production, start getting your website up, start getting your, your social media pages going. If you need to find money, then use those outlets, you know, find your networks and try to get, raise more money. Um, you know, I think one thing that might be a turnoff to some people is that it's, I mean, filmmakers have to come up with money, obviously, but if there's not a big budget, you don't want to come off like this is like a charity thing. You know, you want to show you, you want to come out professional and show people that look, you know, the, you know, I mean, once you get to that level, I know there's various levels of filmmaking, but you, you want to, you want to position yourself so that people will come to you so that, you know, part of that process is getting there. But, um, I, you know, I, it's, there's just so many different ways to 
think about that. That's the whole business side that, um, sorry, everybody, I, you know, I don't really focus on crowdfunding, but um, I hope that helps some. Yeah. Oh. Okay. All right, so we're going to continue talking about press releases uh, quickly. We're not going to get into it too much, but um, press releases are the five W's in one H, which is who, what, where, when, why, and how. That is what makes a news story. And um, the press release is written in an inverted pyramid, in case anyone doesn't know. That means that um, the very first paragraph is your news. And that is the who, what, where, when, why, and how. If you can say, you know, so and so from so and so did this, and this is coming out then. And this, you know, like, uh, like you're gonna, like you have a film out on Amazon Prime and it's coming out on uh, July 25th. Then, you know, all of that goes in the first paragraph. And then each paragraph underneath is more detailed, but less important, less important, less important. And at the bottom, you wanna have like your boilerplate, your company positioning with the web links. Uh, you can link a trailer, uh, you know, a, web, a trailer to your. Uh, press release. And um, I mean, that's, that's the skinny of it in general. We can get more into that in, in another seminar, perhaps. Um, okay, so when you're talking to media, these are the people you care about. So as far as print goes, and this is anywhere in the world, um, obviously, the newspapers, uh, local, regional, national, global, that depends on, you know, only focus on local if you have a local thing happening. If it's a regional event, do the regional press. If it's a national thing, pick your cities. If it's global, pick your countries. Um, magazines, that's considered print, even though people don't buy, I don't know how many people still read a lot of magazines, but same concept. And um, film trades are the, really, the ones you really wanna go to first. Um, those are more, interested in picking up some if you have a distribution deal if you have a talent you have something that is like a recognized name or some deal in place they will cover it more except IndieWire is uh they'll they're more flexible but hollywood reporter and variety um you know and deadline they they're more they cover more in hollywood so if it's again it's like that thing in hollywood well you have to ha you have to have somebody you know or something happening um, but in chicago um you know we have a couple outlets, well, this, um, that we can possibly, you know, pitch. I'll, I'll talk about Chicago in a minute. Um, for broadcast, um, same thing for radio. The specialized shows would be anyone that covers film or entertainment. You don't want to go, unless, unless your film is about a social issue, you go to that person that actually writes or produces um, for that topic. And then television is um, obviously network is national, but that's really really hard to get into. So I would just focus on your local um, local TV, um, unless you have some you know some major major international or national story going on. Um, so online is the same thing. There's lots and lots of film critics out there, bloggers, podcasters, vloggers. Um, it's really up to you to find that right person for you. So, you, you know, you have to do your own research on that. Um, they're out there. And then the people, the main people you want to contact. So it would be a film editor for the print and online. Um, there's not an editor for broadcasting, they're producers. So for, um, for getting a film review, you go to the film critic. You can also go to the film editor, but um, the film editor will tell the film critic what to do, but the film critics sometimes pick their own films they want to review. And, um, you know, there's uh, also film columnists that often are um, freelance, so you can pitch them on something too if you see that they've written something about one, one of your favorite topics or something similar to your movie. And um, then there's beat writers that have specific genres like anime or horror or um, sci-fi. You know, those people, you can go to a New York Times or whatever and see well, who wrote about sci-fi movies and then find their name and see if you can reach them. And it's one way to find people. Um, arts and entertainment editors are more like the weekend edition people who cover everything, not just film, but sometimes they will cover um, movies that are relevant so that's more of a local thing, unless it's a national film release, then you can hit the national papers. 
special interests are the same. If it's uh, if you're if you're doing something in the community or you know it's, you just got to find those people. So then for broadcasting, it's producers in television. So television, radio, you want to find the producer of that show. It's not the host. You don't hosts don't want to be contacted unless they know you personally. But it's the producer that makes the decision on what's going to be uh, covered. So there are some local or you know local film broadcast producers any questions um i do have a couple uh very specific questions relating to diversity and um you know marketing during the pandemic mm -hmm. one of them is is it advisable to share what diversity is intended in a film in the log line um you know it seems like it would be helpful to mention that you know the the lead character is an African-American woman or an immigrant, but at the same time, it seems kind of heavy handed to include that in the log line. Any advice? In the log line? Correct. Yeah, you don't want to put it in the log line. You would put it in a pitch. So we'll but, get to that. But use that. You would definitely use that. I mean, here's the thing. We're all human. We're all different. If you want to categorize yourself like that, that might be okay for that beat. But if you want to reach more mainstream people and influence like, like CBS News, you know, or something, you, you, I mean, that, that is an interesting element for like pitching a story. So you would want to say, you know, this person is from this country and, you know, this is, you want to use it more in the pitch than an actual, um, well, how do you, how do you understand? Because this would be more of a, you could put it in the press release as well. But who you want to send it to is what matters. So. so it could be advantageous to actually mention that, that there's a person of color or an immigrant or something in your story. Well, I mean, yeah, you could. You could. I mean, again, it's like, say, for example, or I don't know if and not everybody's in Chicago, but you know, we have Channel 11. So it's like, we're very diverse here and there's people from all over the world. And if you were to pitch them on a story about an immigrant or WBEZ radio, they would definitely be interested. So you know that, but like, if it's, you know, like regular Fox TV or, you know, Channel 5, it's probably important, but really not gonna be a selling point. Does that, does that make sense? Okay. Thanks, Danielle. Yeah. Okay. And just real quick about um, marketing during the pandemic. Oh yeah. So what ways do filmmakers need to get creative while marketing during the pandemic, say pre-pandemic? Depends what they're doing. <laughs> uh, that's a, that really depends on the film, what where, where they're at in the, in the process. I, is the film made yet? I mean, it, it depends. It's hard. It's one of those questions. I, I mean, I'm happy to ask, answer that person's question if they want to maybe email me later or something. Cause I, I mean, yeah, it seems like it would be case by case. Like it's very yeah, specific yeah. where they are in their film, what the film's about. Yeah. Every, about. yeah. Everybody's in a different stage, you know, in their career. So it's, it all, it, that would be the best. I would be able to answer that question that way. Cool. Thanks. Okay. Annie. Yeah. Okay. So this is when you want publicity. Start when you're on set. It's very important because you need to tell your story of the production so that it helps tell the story that you wanna tell. And you can invite the local press there because if there's, is, there's a worthy enough reason for them to come, uh, they may come and cover your film. But in any case, you wanna create all your, your, your materials right now because um, the cast will be there, the directors will be there, the, uh, the writers will be there. Um, you want to take, um, well, I'll, I'll talk about the press kits in a little bit. So I'm just stop with that. Um, the next step would be festivals or special events or premieres you want to announce uh, whenever your film is going to be at a festival or an event. And then especially if you're going to be there, you want to let the media know. Um, and then you also want to try to get film reviews and interviews of yourself for these events prior to 
interviews can be done at the festival, but you want reviews before the festival so that people will come see your film. And then the other time would be during distribution, whenever you sign a deal, when it's distributed. And then you also wanna get film reviews and new release coverage so that like if you were to look, uh, if you were to Google like on Netflix now, and then you see like Netflix announces like 17 movies or whatever for that month, you know, that's like an example of like, oh, this is, you know, so then all these people pick up the story and it's like, oh, you know, um, my film's out on Netflix, um, that kind of thing. Okay. All right, so here's the materials you wanna create. So EPK or press kit. Now, a lot of times people think EPK is a press kit, but a press kit is actually just for the press. It's not a bunch of fancy photos thrown on a document, uh, not heavy, not heavy, not heavy files. So um, it's really written um, for the press to know the details of the production and the synopsis and everything. So um, these will be sent to the festivals and sales agents and distributors. Uh, your press kit could then become an EPK, which stands for electronic press kit, which a lot of people think is a press kit, but electronic press kit means a um, little bit different. It's not what you wanna to send to a news reporter. They do not want a bunch of digital files in their in inbox and by email. Uh, so EP EPKs are photos, trailers, B-roll, poster and art. These, these are the marketing materials. Um, if a reporter does want anything else from you, they will ask, do not, um, uh, you, you, you know, you let them know you have it, but you don't like just say, here's everything. Cause they will just be like, delete. <laughs> um, EPKs are not the same as a lookbook, the packet that's created to get in casting agents to pitch their clients to act in your film. That's more of a Hollywood thing. But if you have local talent that you want to get an agent, you know, you talk to an agent, you make a lookbook. It's a sim it's very similar um, concept, but it's more to try to get cast. And then in investor packets can be made in advance of your production that um, should be a combination of a lookbook and a press kit uh, with your marketing plans in place. Okay. Press kits. So what you want in a press kit, obviously, is synopsis. People know that uh, a short version and a long version also helps because the press will choose which one they want to use, and the longer ones give a little bit more information, but a short is just short and sweet. The tagline and the log line. Production notes. Um, so this is what you write when you're in production. Um, this includes your director's statement or like something in details that says, um, you know, this is what happened on set. These are the people involved. Um, they don't want to know, like, you know, who the carpenter is or anything like that. You know, it's more like what's interesting about your production. So, yeah, your director statement goes in there. The cast and credits um, usually is obviously always there. The credits, just put the main people. Don't put the entire film credits unless you put it at the very end because the media, if they don't, you know, they're not going to know if they don't know any of these people and they haven't worked in anything that they've ever heard of. It's really not important to them, but you could put it at the very end um, that, you know, that might be the credit roll that you have at the end of your film. Um, so you do want to put in, you could put in a photo or the logo, not too huge, maybe two somewhere in the press kit, social media links, of course, and your media contact information. So that would be your publicist or whoever's gonna be talking to the media. Any questions? Yeah. Um, we have a couple questions very specific to you. A couple questions very specific to you. Okay. Have you ever heard of anyone producing a comic book of their film and then using that comic book as a marketing tool or something like that. Yeah, if the comic book came out already and then you make a movie, you can sell the comic book. You could reset, redistribute the comic book and sell it. Um, Dark Horse Comics does that a lot. Copy that. So even if you're just an in, like independent comic book writer, you don't have to be some big franchise comic book. Uh, if you have a film too, still? 
Well, yes, you're shooting the film and the and the comic book is kind of your marketing tool. Small. Is basically a lookbook for the film. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Good idea. Yeah. Then um, we have a question from somebody that uh, specifically seems interested in getting into the publicity and uh, marketing business um, for J Japanese media here in the US. And they were wondering what your role was on the publicity team while you worked on Perfect Blue and Ninja Scroll. Okay. Um, well, the first company I worked at was Manga Entertainment Inc. And we were the largest distributor of Japanese animation in the world outside of Asia, but we bought movies from Japan, released them, dubbed them in English and distributed them out of Chicago. So back then, um, that was like right when anime was starting to be introduced and that my role was um, the publicist for the theaters and the home video DVD, VHS even, um, Blu-ray. So the, the deal that was done in Japan was our licensing person in Japan that got the movies and then we got the rights to release them here. So does that answer the question? Yes, thank you very much, Danielle. Okie doke. Thanks for the question. Okay, so um, press kits. The press release is signed separately. It's not inside the press kit. Okay, so now the materials, the photos, the artwork. This is, um, okay. So the movie stills, everybody knows you need movie stills. Um, you should include a short written caption of who's in the photo from left to right and what the scene is about, just like a sentence. And if they're a known actor or whatever, you know, put their name in italics or parentheses. Um, you should probably have about five major photos that you want to consistently use, but you can use, you can have, take a whole bunch of photos, but it's, you don't need that many for the press kit. Um, and then for promoting the film in general, you know, photos from events, premieres, behind the scenes of production. As a filmmaker, you definitely want to get yourself in a picture or two or three behind the camera. That will help your profile in the trades, showing you, you in action. Um, the preferred format for the media for photos or JPEG format, ping is okay, tips okay. Um, they want it 300 DPI. They don't want huge photos emailed to them. The artwork to create would be obviously your poster. Sometimes people make a teaser poster because they're not done with the original poster. Oops, the one sheet too is kind of the same thing. It's like if you're submitting to a festival and you don't really have your final poster, you know, create a teaser poster or one sheet. Okay, so the other materials for audio and video. Um, obviously your trailer. This is when you want your viewers to experience your story. So you must make the audiences recognize your title, create a positive feeling about your film, show the strength of the cast and the story, gen generate a want to see reaction. These four elements are fundamental and universal to everybody. You can also create scenes from the film. B-roll clips are considered, that's what the, the TV stations call it, B-roll. Um, so production behind the scenes, short interviews with cast, director, writer, producer. If you were to ever watch DVDs or Blu-rays or even like on Access Hollywood and you see the stars sitting with a poster board behind them and they're talking and answering questions, that is B-roll. And those, those are very key. If you guys make these, you can use them forever. And it's really important because if you have some really creative thing going on and you want to tell your story and you got cast or, you know, you want to, you want people to see you, you want to, you want to have that stuff available for as much as you can. <clears throat> so there's also extras um, that you can include like, you know, clips of the movie premiere being on red carpet, part of your film festival Q and A, any after party bloopers, deleted scenes, these are always fun. I mean, you guys are filmmakers, you're creative. You, you know, you could probably make this really relatively cheap or free. You've got friends and contacts who can do this for you. Um, the more content you have, the better because you can market it 
in many different ways because your film could last for a long time like after you're done with the film and if you get distributed within a year then you get a whole nother year to promote it and then even maybe a whole nother year so the more content you have the more you bring in audiences excuse me <clears throat> bonus features um like if if you're if you're an animator you do some really great stuff i mean you can include some of the tricks in the cinema uh, for depending on who you want to market but it's not necessary another optional thing would be sound bites for radio and podcasts um you know like if you ever hear the radio you know the trailers on the radio and stuff like that that's what i mean is like uh you know intense scenes or things like that uh trailers the voiceover trailer um if you can just easily maneuver that on audio, then at least you have it, but it's not necessary. But like, again, if you were to be on the radio, you can give that to the radio station or the podcaster and they can air it for their audience. Okay. So final materials, what is PR and marketing? The whole complete package is right here. Your publicity includes a press release, an email pitch, press kit, and your marketing materials mean your movie stills, your trailer, clips, your website, social media sites, mostly in Hollywood, they always use Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And uh, yep, that's that. So here we're gonna wrap up pretty soon. Ways to position yourself in the marketplace. What I notice um, a lot of people, because we don't, you know, not everybody has money and there's this, oh, there's, you know, we don't have this or we don't have that. And that lack of lack and lack and limitation um, tends to create like, uh, you know, limits. So, um, you know, you, won't, you might not feel supported, but really you want to be self-sufficient. You want to sustain yourself and you want to think about prosperity, not limits. So try to change your mind shift a little bit. Um, plan your marketing before you start filming. Think about your audiences and how you're going to reach them. Budget for and start publicizing while you're on set. Create the correct marketing materials and publicity materials for the entire life of your film. Keep that in mind always. And then create a catalog of titles. Um, and then eventually, if you build up your, your resume and you have all of this stuff, you could develop and grow a production company if you don't already have one and turn it into a brand. So you wanna have lots and lots of content out there and people will recognize you and your brand. Is there any questions at the moment? Well, we'll um, wait. Let's, let's wait, let me- Just one quick one. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Abby, no, it's all good. Oh. Your audio is off. Oh, you wanna do it later? Yeah, let's just do it. Oh, okay. Yeah, cool. All right. So I'm going to conclude here. Um, so you want to use the publicity you gain from the start of your production and continue to build it into a press kit and marketing package so that it helps you sell your film to investors, festivals, sales agents, and distributors. Do not wait for Hollywood or others to save you. Do not think your distributor will take care of your marketing and publicity for you because they may do some, but they may not do what you really want. You do have permission to contact the media, given the right approach. Um, if you build your brand, you grow your production company, and become self-sustaining in the marketplace. Um, and how you want to define your success really means it's up to you. Um, you don't have to compare yourself to others in a negative way that brings you down. Just build yourself up, be optimistic, and have hope. OK, questions? John? Um, I, I just want to get your feedback on this. It, it, people were chatting quite a bit in the comments about it, but um, okay. using a trailer um, mm -hmm. as a marketing piece, if you, not, if you haven't shot your entire film. I mean, people use short films and things to garner attention that you know sometimes get turned into to movies or television series. So would you recommend using a trailer if you don't have an entire film shot? as a marketing tool? Usually before the release date, if you say, okay, we're in July, say that um, 
you're going to have a, your short film in the festival in a month and a half. I would think you should you should have a, a small trailer um, to pre-promote it so that you build awareness. And um, even if it's not complete, you know, I've seen many filmmakers pre-promote their stuff, and I think that's wise. You know, you can also release the trailer later on as an official trailer. Now, you know, release people have seen that before, where it's like, here's the official trailer. So specifically, they're just like they don't they don't have it all in the can. They don't have money to make a feature film, so they want to make a trailer to try to raise money. Oh, feature film. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Um, I don't know if that's really going to help. I, I, I don't know, Tavari, what do you think? So the question is, should they make a trailer to help raise money for their feature film, like a proof of concepts, or? or they don't have funds to make a feature film. So they're either gonna make a trailer to try to raise funds for their feature, feature film or not. Um, right, so like a proof of concept, but even shorter, not like a short version of the feature, but a trailer. I, um, I'm not very familiar with that approach, but um, I say go for it because you're gonna do what you can to raise funds and if, making a trailer involves less money and less really if it's going to allow you to use whatever resources you have to make something visual to help show investors potential um, a potential crowdfunding campaign like this is this is sort of the vibe the feel um, I say go for it whatever you can do to make to sort of visualize your vision as a filmmaker to say, this is the film I'm gonna make. This is how it's gonna feel like. These are the characters. Um, essentially, so it's basically a proof of concept, but in, in a trailer form, I say, go for it. Um, and a question for Danielle, it looks like people are, are interested in um, accessing the PowerPoint in a PDF. Um, should they be reaching out to you directly um, and so that they can, um, schedule a consultation as well as receive a copy of this PDF PowerPoint? <clears throat> yes, um, I have a, uh, I was gonna get there, but I have a, an offer for everybody here that if they're interested in um, in like, like a half hour conversation about your particular situation, I'm happy to help you and see if I can uh, assist you. And um, I, I, I could send you, I could send you a copy of the PDF or, um, yeah, I could do that. So I let me uh, let me get to this part. Okay, so here's here's what I was gonna say is that you know so I work with tailor made packages for filmmakers because um, everybody's different and they have different things and I am putting together individual classes on all the different ways to do PR and marketing for yourself. But if you're looking for like a coach or you want to go dive deeper into your career and help. Uh, build a foundation for yourself, you can contact me on um, my website. There's a subscribe button for indie film publicity. And I will, I will send you a, a document that you can answer some questions and then we can arrange a call. Um, and then, or you can contact me by my social media pages. Um, so yeah. Anybody else, uh, John? No questions at the moment. Okay. Um I see questions. Sorry, I think it's just moving faster on my on my end. Um, I see a question. The latest question here is from Jessica Tolliver. Uh, for those of us taking the DIY approach or creatives um, who don't yet have the funds to hire a marketer or a PR specialist like yourself, Danielle, what are some resources or examples we can reference from in order to create our own marketing materials? This has been very informative. So, um, right. So, hi, so we talked about this hiring. Like, why would we need to hire a, a PR person like yourself? Well, that allows a filmmaker um, like myself, the director, the producer, to focus on my job and use sort of take care of all the other details because it requires it requires a full time person to focus on the PR um, portion of your film. So, with as an indie filmmaker with limited funds, what resources can I tap into to help um, to help do that? Um, advice. Yeah, well, I mean, if you have friends that can write, um, people who are photographers that know how to take really good pictures or a video person, 
any any students, uh, friends of yours that know communications or just enjoy English writing, um, you know, you can recruit them. You don't necessarily have to hire a publicist if you don't have the budget, obviously. But I mean, that's kind of why I'm here is like I want to teach people and I'm going to have classes available um, as a coach. So um, other resources you could use would be, I, I suppose if you look online, you would be able to find what articles on how to write press releases and stuff like that. Um, another option would be to look at one of your favorite movies and see how they're marketing it on social media and like go back in days and see what kind of messaging they're using and see if you can kind of do the sim a similar concept. Um, that answer the question? Uh, yeah. Um, one, we have one more about um, someone that is here in Chicago just starting out in um, the publicity field and they just want to know if you have any advice or recommendations to somebody just starting out in their career in public. To get into the film business? Yes. They are just starting out in the film business, in publicity in Chicago. Um, general advice that you may have for them. General advice. Well, first of all, obviously make connections, network with people. Um, if that person wants to contact me, I'm happy to um, give them information or you know help them out. Um, so feel free to go to my website or email me. I, I mean, it's hard to say besides knowing knowing people and, and learning how to do it you got to just kind of be on it but there are things that i'm doing that you know this person can learn from i'm happy to mentor excellent cool. thank you very much danielle sure so i got one more thing i want to just say for everybody um this is a quote that is really good um Devarty and i both read this book <clears throat> called the soul of money and it's about transforming your relationship with money in your life. And this woman, uh, Lynn Twist wrote it and it's, she really helped, um, she was a very wealthy woman and she helped uh, learn uh, and help feed people from all over the world who were not self-sufficient and really were lacking in knowledge or education and how to like grow vegetables and realize that, you know, people, people are really empowered when they feel that they're supported and there is, there is a way to help each other out. So she says, when your attention is on what's lacking and scarce in your life, in your work, in your family, in your town, then that becomes what you're about. Those thoughts and fears grow from the attention you give them and take over your life. But if your attention is on your capacity that you have to sustain yourself and your family and contribute to a meaningful way in the well-being of others, then your experience of what you have is nourished and it grows. Even in adversity, if you can appreciate your capacity to meet it, learn and grow from it, then you create value where no one would have imagined possible. In the light of your appreciation, then your experience of prosperity grows. So if you're struggling as a filmmaker, don't worry, you got this. <laughs> you can do it. So that's it. Danielle, thank you so much. Um, I know that this was helpful for me as, as a filmmaker, and I hope it's been helpful for everyone who tuned in. Um, thank you everyone who um, gave up your time and showed up today. I just know that this um, is being recorded, so it'll live on Facebook and eventually we'll upload it to YouTube, our DK's uh, YouTube page um, by tomorrow. So it will live online for a couple months um, and do take advantage of reaching out to Danielle's offer to have an individual consultation, stay in touch with her. Um, you know, this is a part of our effort to really build our local community as well as our international community. Um, as creatives, as filmmakers, we had a ton of questions covering everything from crowdfunding, crowdsourcing, um, screenplay writing, copyright. So a lot of it um, may not pertain specifically to marketing PR, but they're all sort of part of this ecosystem. So um, tune in for our next event where we will be focusing on crowdfunding. Um, so stay tuned uh, to our Facebook page and enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. Um, we, will, we will see you soon. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>
okay, let me end, <laughs> let me end this, hold on. <laughs>